One day, I was in a co-working space here in Colombia, writing in my moleskin notebook. One of the other co-workers came up to me and asked me a question. He said, in Spanish, with a sense of earnest curiosity, why are you writing in your notebook? Your computer is right in front of you. You can write much faster on your computer. Why aren't you writing on your computer? And that question really stuck with me because I thought the answer was obvious, though I guess it wasn't. And it got me thinking about the tools we use to create and why we use them. This is Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. already know from listening to episode 218 about the four stages of creativity that we don't solve creative problems all at once. We need to go through stages. We need to go through preparation, learning about the problem. From there, the problem goes through incubation. Our subconscious works on it while we do something else. Only then can we reach illumination, our aha moment. Finally, to get it ready to ship, we need to go through verification. And you also know from being a human being that when you're up against a really tough problem, anything in the world suddenly becomes more appealing than that problem. You'll get shiny object syndrome and want to escape to another project, or you'll check social media. I even find that I sometimes procrastinate on a really tough project by working on a slightly less tough project that I have been procrastinating on until now. Ayn Rand called it white tennis shoes syndrome, that if she came up against a tough problem while writing, she'd suddenly remember that there were some white tennis shoes in the closet that had smudges on them and that needed to be cleaned. Distractions, it seems, are nothing new. But I found, depending upon where you are in the four stages of creativity, The tool you use can make all of the difference in whether you keep moving forward or fall off the tracks. Through lots of trial and error, I have collected for myself the perfect arsenal of different tools for different situations. Here are some of them. First thing in the morning, I write, with my eyes still closed while still in bed, on my AlphaSmart. It's a portable word processor, discontinued, available used on Amazon for about 40 bucks. I do my morning writing session on an iPad with a wired external keyboard. I have multiple 9 by 12 inch whiteboards lying around the house. I jot down ideas when they come to me. Sometimes I'll even take a whiteboard to a cafe and write on it in long form. Then I have my 6 by 9 inch Moleskin Classic Notebook, I also carry with me everywhere the tiniest notebook I could find, the Moleskin Volant, which is two and a half inches by four inches. And of course, I have an iPhone SE on which I occasionally brainstorm if there's no better tool around. And sometimes I even find it useful to simply pace around and talk out loud. Finally, there's plain old-fashioned thinking, just sitting in the park or swinging in my hammock trying to navigate the twists and turns of a problem in my own mind. Oh, and I almost forgot, I also have a laptop. I try to avoid using that, but I sometimes simply need to be on a full-blown computer. Some of these tools are slippy. Some of these tools are grippy. Slippy tools are efficient. There's little friction. You can create your final product quickly with a slippy tool. Grippy tools are inefficient. There's lots of friction. You can't create your final product quickly with a grippy tool. Often you can't create your final product at all with a grippy tool. Slippy tools sound great, but they have a drawback. Because slippy tools are so powerful, you can more easily get distracted. Yes, I can type fast and switch between documents and quickly do web research on my laptop. But I can also just as easily check my email, putz around on social media, or waste a couple of hours on Reddit. Grippy tools sound terrible. Writing by hand is slow. And worst of all, you can't even use the writing. When I write on a whiteboard, I have to erase it all eventually. 
Some people will protest, but David, you could get an iPad with pencil and you could write by hand and it would convert the characters into text. Or David, you could get a special pen that would store the writing as text in the cloud. When I wrote about my AlphaSmart, my beloved portable word processor, people had all sorts of objections and suggestions. Why don't you just get a Chromebook, they'd say. Or don't you know there's this word processor that costs 10 times as much, but that syncs with the cloud? Or my personal favorite, why don't you just get some self-control and learn how to focus? Oh, it shakes my head. This is the sad state of our world. This is how little respect we have for real thinking and the space and time and mental energy that it requires. If we don't wake up, we as a species are fucked. Fortunately, that was five years ago that I wrote about my alpha smart. And since then, people are starting to get it. They're finally starting to realize that they don't have perfect control over their thoughts and actions. They're finally starting to realize that others want control of their thoughts and that others profit from that control. They're finally starting to realize that the tools they decide to use shape those thoughts, whether that's through enabling clearer thinking or making them vulnerable to disruptions in their thinking. Imagine the most simple example possible of a primate using a tool. Imagine a chimp fishing ants out of an anthill with a twig. In the moments when that chimp has her hand wrapped around the twig, she cannot use that hand for some other purpose. This is the nature of tools. Tools give us new powers, but in the process, tools take away other powers. Imagine you're Superman and you have the power of X-ray vision. Wouldn't you prefer to be able to turn off your powers of X-ray vision? If you had X-ray vision all the time, that would actually suck. You'd be bumping into things because you couldn't see them. Everyone you saw would be naked. Before you get too excited, remember, everyone you saw would be naked. Here's another thing that surprises most people when I tell them about my arsenal of tools. Much of what I produce on these tools disappears. My morning writing session on the Alpha Smart, when I'm done, I delete everything I just wrote. The writing I do on the whiteboards, I usually erase it all as soon as I've run out of space. When I speak out loud, I usually don't record it. And when I sit and think, those thoughts disappear into the ether. Yes. If I really come across something great using any of these tools, I have options. I can write down a thought in a notebook. I can record my own speech. I can take a picture of a whiteboard. I can even hook up my Alpha Smart to a computer and transfer my writing. But that's not the point. The point of each of these tools is not what I produce with these tools. It's the way these tools enable thoughts. In the early stages of any project, the thinking I do with these tools serves as preparation, one of the four stages of creativity I mentioned in episode 218. Preparation can be about research, but preparation can just as easily be the exploration of a problem in your own mind. What do you think about this? What questions do you have? What are the ins and outs and ups and downs of it all? I know that once I've done that preparation, the next stage, incubation, will take over. I know that when I return to the problem, I may have my aha moment. I may have my moment of illumination. This is why I want grippy tools for the early stages of any project. In a way, your progress on the project is itself slippy or grippy. When I'm in the early stages of a project, it's like I'm scaling up a wet rock face. I don't have a firm grasp on the problem. I need all the grip I can get. I need any threat of distraction to be as far away as possible. 
I don't need distraction. As Nariel would say, I need traction. Yes, after the tools like training wheels on a bicycle have enabled the thoughts, after I've explored the twists and windings of the problem in my head, I eventually have a grip on the problem. The rock face is no longer wet. I don't need grippy hiking boots to keep going. I can wear more comfortable and nimble cross trainers. When it's time to turn clear thoughts into finished products, when the product is ready for verification, then I can use a slippy tool, such as a laptop connected to the internet and all its myriad distractions. So, the next time you're working on a tough problem, and the next time that tough problem is making distractions more attractive, ask yourself, am I using the right tool? Let go of the dangerous expectation of an instant breakthrough. Trade in your slippy tool for a grippy tool. A reminder, starting in June, Love Your Work will be essay episodes like this one only. Now, why am I not doing interviews for the first time in four years of Love Your Work? Because I am digging in, I am gearing up, I am all systems go on my next book, Mind Management, Not Time Management. This is a big one. Since you're a loyal podcast listener, listening all the way to the end of this episode, I want you to have the first chance to read it. Mind Management, Not Time Management chronicles my decade-long quest to find the keys to the future of productivity. And these keys happen to be very relevant to these work-from-home times. I'm offering a very special preview edition of the book to my loyal listeners. Read the chapters that are available right now and get the rest of the chapters as I finish them. If you've ever wondered how I've kept this show coming every week for four years, you'll find the answers and how you can create consistently in the latest chapter I added to the preview edition, Creative Systems. If you feel like you have the time, but you struggle to find the energy, if you would like to have endless energy, to do the things that matter to you, then this is the book for you, Mind Management, Not Time Management. Learn more and buy at kdv.co slash mind. This is a limited time offer. I will be closing down sales soon. At that point, you have to wait for the first edition, which comes in the fall. So do buy now. That's kdv.co slash mind. Thank you for sharing my work with your followers. On Twitter, thank you to Caleb Fong, Geeko Supremo, and Meter Amig. And thank you to Balance the Grind for naming Love Your Work in their top 26 podcasts you can listen to about work, life, and balance. On Instagram, thank you to We Publish Horror, Success from Books, Jason J. Clement, ECM Tombas, Shelby Simone, Eif Goal, Weather's Cold, Blue Veil Writing, Mel the Creative, Alma Hoffman, Michigan Statler, and Jordan Khrushchev. The update of the month goes to Geeko Supremo over on Twitter saying, okay, here's something we all need to get better at, supporting someone we care about who is grieving this conversation with Refuge in Grief and at Cadavy gives good actionable advice. Please listen and use these skills Hashtag do not fix grief. Hashtag support them. That, of course, is episode 223 with Megan Devine. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by our top Patreon supporters, such as Jeffrey Mason. The theme music for Love Your Work is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc., <laughs>